AI coding agents are rather good at coming up with syntactically valid working code. And it does design, reasoning about how to arrange that code. So is there actually any point in still learning how to code? Or should I just learn to design and leave the coding to the AI? Or actually perhaps learning either coding or design is pointless because the AI is doing that? Actually, I don't think so. Let me explain how I reason about what is the most important thing to learn, design or coding. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, creator of Salman Coaching. Welcome to the Modern Software Engineering channel. We are several presenters here, all aiming to bring you the best advice about the technical aspects of software development and more. Do remember, hit like if you enjoy the content today and subscribe to get more like this. So what is more important to learn then, design or coding? These activities are kind of difficult to separate. The source code is the design of the software, and it was Jack W. Reeves writing in the 1990s who first pointed this out. If you look at other kinds of engineering, once a complete design is defined for like a, a car or a bridge or a chemical substance, then a manufacturing team can come along and use that design to build the product, lots of it, without any further intervention from the designers. And in software, that's what the compiler and the build pipeline do. The engineering design equivalent for a software product is the source code because it has the same function. The production step is deterministic. No further intervention from the designer is needed. So when you write code, you are designing the software. And in fact, testing and debugging are also part of the design process. This is how we evaluate and refine that design. So it doesn't really make sense to try and learn coding without also learning design. Now, I mentioned earlier that AI tools do both design and coding, but I think I need to qualify that. It definitely does coding, but design is more than only the code in the repository. I'm going to say more about how to use AI tools in development later on, but first I want to develop the idea of what design is more than just the source code. Peter Nauer has a great take on this. He was one of the pioneers back in the day, really influential computer scientists. In 1985, he proposed that what actually goes on when we write code is theory building. He says, programming should be regarded as an activity by which the programmers form a kind of insight, a theory. And then he means something very specific by theory that he goes on to explain. But it includes things like, you can explain why each part of the program is what it is. You can answer queries about the program. You can argue about it. And crucially, you can modify that program correctly. So you can add new features at a reasonable cost. So the important part is what in the heads of the people working on the software, not only what's in the source code. And this is actually the biggest determinant of how easy it is to update that software, which is important. Perhaps this is where software engineering differs from other kinds of engineering, because the design of software is changing all the time, particularly in continuous delivery. We're building a new production-ready version of the software, at least daily. And every time the build pipeline runs successfully, we've got a new design that's ready to go. Kent Beck has a really good take on this, which he calls Constantine's equivalence. But first, I'd like to pause here and just thank our sponsors, Equal Experts, Transfic, MailTrap. We are grateful for their support so we can keep making these videos. And they're not just random companies. These are ones that we've chosen because they're relevant for people in software like we are. So do go and check out their links in the show notes. In software, the overall cost is dominated by the cost of change. It's not the cost of initially designing the system that matters, it's how easily we can change it. And that is Constantine's equivalence. You can see it here written as an equation. The cost of software is roughly equal to the cost of changing the software, which is roughly equal to the cost of big changes, which is roughly equivalent to the amount of coupling that you've got. That is, 
Design is important because it allows us to lower the cost of change. The biggest factor is coupling, which is closely related to how much of the design you can hold in your head at once without losing important detail. So going back to Peter Nauer's theory building model of software design, it's a bit like this. We build up a mental model, a theory of what the software does, and then we transfer that into the code that we write. The closer the match between the mental model and the actual model in the code, the better the software will be. This is actually the largely the premise of domain-driven design. The next programmer who comes along to modify the code will do a better job if they can also build up the same theory or mental model of the code. And of course, it helps then if they already understand the domain language of the code before they look at it. Sometimes it can be really hard to read code that someone else wrote because we're struggling to recreate their mental model of it. They didn't leave us enough clues in the code and we can't easily grasp it. If you get the wrong mental model of how the code works, it's very hard then to change it without breaking something. So good design then is about putting yourself in the shoes of the reader and making it as easy as possible for them to understand. And often this is about putting more words into the code, more of that domain language. And it's about reducing coupling so you can reason about this part without needing to hold that other part in your head at the same time. One example of this is when you do the refactoring extract function. You take a section of code from within a larger context and make a new method out of that. You're creating a new abstraction, a new box in the code corresponding to a part of the theory that you've got in your head. And crucially, that new method has a new name. Words that represent what it does, make it easier for someone to read that code and understand the domain and construct that theory of how it works in their head. If you've done that well, people coming to that code might not even need to read the body of the new method. The name should be enough for them to construct the right theory in their head for what it does. Let's circle back to this question of the role of an AI coding assistant in design. Now, if you delegate the task of designing code to an AI tool, you're normally giving it high level instructions in a natural language, together with some constraints like test cases and design guidelines. And the tool will often produce a working solution. It does design code. However, that theory of that code doesn't necessarily automatically get inserted into your head. What you've actually got in your head is what you wrote in the prompts. And then if you subsequently need to change that code, either you need to do that purely by modifying the prompt, or you will need to read that code, engage with it, critique it, analyze it, work out how it does what it does, and ideally be able to imagine how it could be written better. You get that theory in your head. And actually, that is the same process that you would go through for code written by another human. As Martin Fowler famously said, any fool can write code a computer can understand. Good programmers write code that humans can understand. And even if you're using an AI assistant, that's actually still good advice. But having said all that, some good friends of mine who I respect as excellent engineers are making very good use of these AI tools and they don't always find that they need to read the code that it produces. I'm thinking in particular of a story told to me by Llewellyn Falco. He built this bit of software with a few others. It took a few days, and the main focus was the close customer collaboration. They were iterating very frequently on the specification. All the code was written by AI tools, to the extent that at the end when the system was delivered in production, Llewellyn couldn't even remember if it was written in JavaScript or TypeScript. His whole focus had been on engineering a setup where that didn't actually matter. So what I think happened here is that Llewellyn and his colleagues have managed to raise the abstraction level so they are programming in prompts instead of in source code. And the AI is taking the role of the compiler. The theory of how the system works is entirely written in natural language in text files that the AI can use to generate the code. It's an impressive story, and I don't doubt that Llewellyn is getting excellent results with these tools. He is a brilliant engineer and coach. But I am skeptical about how this approach can scale to larger systems with more updates and a greater need for consistency. 
but it is intriguing. I mean, the thing is, the pattern I've noticed is that the engineering skills you need to get impressive results while using these AI tools are largely the same engineering skills that allow you to get impressive results without them. So going back to the original question then, which is more important to learn, design or coding? Logically, the answer is both, since all source code is also design. However, part of the design is not in the source code. Peter Nauer's insight is that humans need to form a mental model, a theory of a design, before they can change it safely. And Constantine's equivalence says that that's really important, since the cost of software is essentially the same as the cost of changing it. If an AI writes the code, you are still doing the design, because you must have that theory in your head to be able to change and update the software safely. And design is a difficult skill to learn. The way people normally learn is by lots of experience, writing code. So actually, my advice, especially early in your career, is to focus on learning to write code in the traditional way. And with that, you'll learn how to do design without AI. And then adding those specific prompting techniques later on so that you can work well with AI actually should go pretty quickly. Because, I mean, at the moment, what makes a good prompt and how to use these tools is still changing very rapidly, whereas good design skills will always be needed. So happy coding and designing!